In this second content video, I'm going to talk a little bit about cartography. Cartography is something that we will more formally talk about later in the course, but it's important to have some basic principles down as you begin to display some of the vector data that you're making. So let's just talk a little bit about different ways that data can be classified um, for cartographic purposes, and different types of symbolization that can be used. So there are lots of different forms of symbolization as you're going to see. A single symbol is one color and one size for all the data, pretty simple. A unique symbol would be one particular um, size for all the data, but unique colors for each of the different symbolized data. So imagine a map of the world that shows the different countries of the world. A graduated symbol is one in which the size of the symbol changes to show numerical variation. And a proportional symbol is one where you have a moving range of sizes to show that same numerical variation. In addition, there are other classification options as well. And of course, these all apply to points, lines, and polygons. So this is just a, a simple point classification system that uses a single symbol, in this case, um, it's either a yes or a no, sort of a, bool a Boolean question here, whether or not a symbol is colored or is not colored. Compare that to this map, which is graduated. Here, the size of the cities is graduated. It's not proportional because there's not variation across a spectrum. Instead, there are just particular graduated sizes that are used um, to show, in this case, um, the average number of arrivals um, in, of, in this case, the um, patients with Zika, um, and also the color is shown to show the potential abundance in July of um, the disease. Here we are showing points as well. Um, in this case, the points are single symbol, there's no um, even unique symbolization taking place, but the points are used to show population density um, through clustering principles. Here is line data. This is a map that I made of ski trails in Kincaid that uses different colors, unique symbols, to show different difficulties of trails. But you can also use graduated or proportional lines as well. And here's a map that shows migration between states, and the thickness of the line represents the number of people. It's a pretty good map, and pretty easy to understand. Here's a polygon data that uses unique symbols as well, where the colors of countries mean nothing in particular, they just allow us to differentiate one country from another. This map, on the other hand, uses just two symbols, either red or blue, to show the counties that were carried by President Trump. <clears throat> um, one of the important things to note about this, though, is that there are some errors in the map. So I actually took it upon myself to um, make this map and to make it a little bit more sophisticated by instead of just using single colors like this, to instead use uh, graduated colors um, representing the density of votes for either President Trump or Secretary Clinton. This map uses graduated circles. Circles are often used, um, and here the circles are used to show the surplus number of votes for Secretary Clinton versus the number of surplus votes in any particular county for President Trump. A different way to symbolize the same data. This one, though, again, uses sort of a combination of polygon endpoint data. And finally, this is a map that shows the same thing but uses sort of a three-dimensional representation. <clears throat> Using different colors of map on maps in polygons is one of the most important ways that you can classify data. We'll talk a lot more about this later, in particular the importance of what are called color ramps, which are different colors that are ramped to show different things. And we'll also talk about intervals and the problems of symbolizing data for the colorblind as well. 
So that's it for now. Again, we'll get back to classification and cartography in a lot more depth later.